Hey guys, welcome back to the bookcase. So today I thought I would do a February wrap up, even though it's 6th of March, but better late than never. I read seven books this month, or you can say six and a half because I did DNF one. We'll get to that when we get to that. This month I didn't read that many books because towards the end of the month, kind of, I didn't get into a reading slump, but I kind of just got really busy and didn't have as much time to read. I just started uni, so that will be one of the factors. So it's not as much as I would like. I'm still pretty happy with what I read, so let's get into it. I just want to talk about this for a moment because I love this book. On the 29th of March, I actually read Eleanor Oliphant, it's completely fine, and this was a five star read for me. I just wanted to put this in here because obviously I just started this channel so I didn't have a January wrap up. But if you're looking for a book that will literally make you laugh out loud, then this is the book. It does have some like trigger warnings. The overall message is really good and it's kind of portrayed in like a light-hearted like funny way I guess you could say and then towards the end it gets more like intense but yeah this was a five star read for me I love I love Eleanor she is the best character ever the way that she like comes out with things they're just inappropriate you wouldn't say those things like they're things that people are thinking but you just wouldn't say and it's just so funny to hear it happen um so on the second of Feb I think the beginning of Feb I started the second book in a series Last year, probably, I think it was around like August time, I read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and it's taken me so long to actually finish the series because although I didn't enjoy the first one, I didn't think like the second and third book could add more to the story, but I was completely wrong. If you want a murder mystery series, it's like really easy to finish, it keeps you entertained, I honestly do recommend this. The second book is Good Girl Bad Blood, I think I read it at four stars, but I'd probably give you like four and a half stars but it was good how it linked into the first book and how some characters ended up I guess linking with things that happened in the first book I think Holly Jackson just overall like the whole series she was able to like make so many I don't know it's hard to explain she made so many things happen that like coincided with things that happened in all the other books I don't know she just wrote it really well pretty much the second book I don't want to like go into detail too much just in case um, you guys want to read it I mean most people have probably read this before so let me know what you think down below about this series I think this second book was the second best in the series a lot of people might disagree with me and say the first one was the best but I actually disagree in a way, the storyline of the second book was a little less exciting. It was kind of expected, but the reason I liked it more was because it linked in and kind of unlocked some more secrets that you didn't really know. What's this person doing? Like, why did this happen? Blah, blah, blah. I wrote it at four and a half stars, and I definitely would start this series if you haven't yet. Last book in the book, well, it's not a series, it's a trilogy. I don't know why I've been saying series this whole time. It's a trilogy, but you never know, she might come out with another one. As Good As Dead is the last book in the trilogy. This for me was the best one. I think the reason that I love this so much was because you know all the characters, you know like some things that have gone on in the first and second book. And then with the third book, it starts off pretty much straight away with like drama. And it didn't take me long to get into because it just went straight into the good stuff. The twist in here, halfway through the book, it takes a completely different turn that you didn't expect. So that's kind of what drew me in because it was like, oh, what's going to happen? And then you find out what happens and you've still got so many pages left and you're like, what's going to happen now? And then something else happens and it's like, out of the whole series, I would say this was the best, best book. So if you haven't read the second and third, then I do recommend going and getting the other two because in my opinion, they're a lot better than the first one. This is why it took me so long to read the second and third. I enjoyed it, but I didn't love it enough to read the other two straight away. They're really easy reads for me. I just think, yeah, best series. And the next book that I read in February, this for me was my first time reading a book from this author. And this is Malibu Rising. I've never read a Taylor Jenkins read book before. I still, to this day, don't exactly know how I feel about it. What I would say is this book is the perfect book to take on holiday to read around a pool. I kind of, I have a lot to say about this, but I don't know if people are going to agree with me. I found it hard, very, very hard actually, to connect with the characters. Obviously, sad things are going to happen and you're going to find things about people and you are going to be like, oh my god, that's sad. Like, I did shed a couple of tears, but because there's so many characters in the book that just keep coming out and coming out and coming out, and you kind of get lost and they're like, oh, 
this name and then this name and then this name and when I say a lot of characters like at the end of the book there's a lot of characters without giving any spoilers away there's a party and you get introduced to like pretty much every single person at that party and it's like oh. the book itself it is like an easy read and it's kind of more realistic it talks a lot about what's happened in the past and it's jumping from the past to the present which that's another thing that i don't really like because i get so engrossed in like the past and then it flicks to the present and then i get engrossed in the present and then it flicks back to the past i'm like i just want to know what happens the book itself was actually quite enjoyable for me sitting out in the sun the whole vibe of the book is like very summery and sun and surf and sand and beach and waves it's just the perfect book to read on a hot day so i would recommend it if you're going on holiday to read something like this because it gets you in the mood. For me as well, I kind of disagreed with the way that some of the characters behave. I mean, it's very old school views on women, which annoys me to read, which makes sense. I think it's between like 1960s and 1980s, so a lot of it is disagreeable about women and that annoys me to read. I don't know, I, I felt she could have made the characters a little bit more strong-willed against that. The character Nina, she did kind of have like character development and towards the end like she became a lot more of like an independent woman. Her mum for me was just like, I didn't really like her character at all. It makes me not want to read another of her books. I've got Forever Interrupted and I guess yeah if I was on holiday I would probably want to read something like this. I don't know there was a lot of drama but it was like petty drama that I don't care about. There wasn't an overall like big story to it. It was just like it was just like everyday life kind of thing. Hello. Are you joking? Yeah. Well that's ruined my day. I hate people. I'm kind of annoyed now. <laughs> Anyway, moving on, the end of the month I spent finishing, well, starting and finishing a series, which I've had on my TBR for a very long time, a physical TBR. Back when I first got into reading again, like last year, um, it was obviously around the time that all of Colleen Hughes' books were like up there with the best books to read. I kind of went on a splurge when I was in England, when I went to the works, because it's cheap, and just bought like so many books to bring home with me. And I bought the Hopeless series when I was there. I also wanted to buy them when I was there because I like this cover. I think these are the old covers. I just would prefer to have like a black cover than ones with people's faces on them. I hate books with people's faces on them. So yeah, I started the Hopeless series. I wasn't actually sure if I was gonna like this, the last book that I read by Coho was Confess. I didn't hate it, but I, it was just like the same old stuff that she really writes. There's always the same kind of storyline with like a different setting and different characters, if that makes sense. It was very predictable, but I actually found this one kind of shocking. I actually really enjoyed Hopeless. I think I gave this a four star again, like meaning four and a half. That's something that Goodreads needs to change. They need to let you give half stars. I just realized I didn't give my other rising rating. I think I rated My Libby Rising a three star. I might even give it a two and a half actually. Yeah, we're gonna go with two and a half stars because I've rated other books three stars so I like more. So I would give this a four and a half stars. Even on the verge of five, but it was just missing something for me. The storyline is really good. The male character, wow. Yeah, um, Holder, the like main guy character, he was just like my dream book boyfriend. The way he's described to me is just like bad boy, but like really sweet. Oh, and there's a lot of twists and turns that are like, oh my God, I did not see that coming. I didn't think it was going to take that turn. Also for me, I think it was the end of the book that I didn't like as much. She focuses on a lot of different traumas in her books. And sometimes I think she goes into too much detail with it. It's like, there's a difference between putting out a message, triggering people. That is, that is a warning for you guys, trigger warning. Some things happen and I'm like, why was it dealt with in that way? Some of her books, I just think some of the characters deal with things in really weird ways, which are really unrealistic. And I'm like, if this was real life, you would not have gotten away with this, 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 and this. And like, that would just not happen. Other than that, it was a really good book. Four and a half stars for me. <laughs> now let's get on to the second book of this series, Losing Hope. This book focuses on the exact same story from Holder's perspective. What a waste of my time. I read, I'm going to say like 100 pages, probably a little bit more. I said, fuck it. I am not reading all of this shit all over again from someone else's perspective. And I skimmed through it. I was like, yep, heard that, heard that, heard that, heard that. And I was like, ah, I think I got to page. The book kind of breaks it up with some like, like notes. Um, and I read all the notes because obviously they wouldn't be in the first one. And now I got to like the end part. 
I think, yeah, there was around 80 pages left. Um, and I read that because that adds to the story that you don't hear in the first one. That did add to the story, so I wouldn't buy the whole book just to read the last 30 pages. At least I got something out of it. I give that like a two star. Absolute waste of my time. If you haven't read the first book, then that one, you could read it on its own and get the exact same thing out of it. Um, so then it would probably be like a four and a half star again. As a series, two star. The movie, angry because it almost put me in a reading slump. First book I've ever DNF'd, other than when I was younger. And then there's two novellas, Finding Perfect and Finding Cinderella. Oh, let me just get on my knees for this one. <sighs> okay, so if you guys aren't aware, All Your Perfects is actually part of this series. You can read it as a standalone 100%. It's got its own story to it. But these novellas link this book to the Hopeless series, which I thought was really cool because I heard about it and I wondered, I was like, how, how is this, you read Hopeless and you read Losing Hope and you're like, I don't see, where's the connection, like, how is this going to happen? And then you read the novellas and you're like, ah, oh, that was smart, that was a smart one, Coco. So, Finding Cinderella is the first novella. This focuses on the story of the two best friends of the main characters, Holder and Skye their best friends and it focuses on their story. It's hard to say anything without giving it away. This is more just a cute little, I'd say modern romance story. It's not too typical, like old school love. It's very, very modern and it's really cute. And then we go into Finding Perfect and that's where everything links in to All Your Perfects. It's quite a heartwarming story. It's nice to know after reading this that things that I felt were unresolved in All Your Perfects were kind of resolved in this. I do think the novellas are worth a read. It's kind of building on the friendships between all of them. Yeah, you can't really say much about these without giving them away because they're so short. Like. Yeah, so I, I'll give these like a three star. So that's a wrap up of my February reads. Um, like I said, it's not as many books as I wanted to read this month. The beginning of the month started off well, just towards the end, got a little bit like, blah. Um, at the minute I am reading the Shadow Me series. So that has ended today's video. Sorry it was a short one, but I thought you might be interested. Let me know what you want to see next. I probably will do another read with me or I'm probably going to do like a little wrap up of the Shadow Me series maybe. I do have a couple books that I want to film videos on of me reading. So it's just getting around to it. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to give the video a like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I'll see you next time. <laughs>